Hey guys and gals, another video from Blender Tech here. Just a quick one, uh, another request uh, or a call for help video. Um, a lady, at least I assume a lady, uh, emailed me looking for some help regarding some uh, Blender stuff. She got interested in Blender for some reason and had some troubles with it. So I'm going to explain the two issues in very slow and easy terms and in doing so I've backed up all my settings so I'm gonna load the factory settings so this is exactly how blender would look when you uh, when you first install it I guess so the first thing she wanted to know was um, how to animate something so what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this cube we're gonna have this cube move back and forth and we're just gonna make a simple animation it's it's not gonna be fancy it's not gonna be cool but it's it's gonna show the basics of animation so by default blender works at 24 frames per second it starts at frame one and it ends at frame 250 so that's these ones down here these are your frames that you can scroll through by clicking and holding your leftmost button I will turn on screencast keys oh I need to enable that I guess I forgot about that that will be the only other thing I will enable alright it's not exactly where I like it but that should work so anyways I'm just going to hide the camera for now by pressing the I button so it doesn't get in the way. Same with this lamp. So we're going to grab our cube by pressing the right mouse button. We're going to go back to frame 1. And we're still in object mode. So we're on frame 1. You can tell which frame you're on by viewing this text here. So we're on frame 8 right now. You can also use the arrow keys here. Or sorry, you can use the, the buttons here to go back. Or you can just use the arrow keys on your keyboard to go back frames. But we're going to start at frame 1. So at frame 1, we want our cube to be, say, over here. So I'm just going to use the manipulators to drag it back somewhere. So say right there and let's just drag it up to the grid floor roughly so now we're gonna insert a keyframe a keyframe is essentially where your animation is um is gonna start where where you're gonna insert animation data so to do that all you have to do is press I and then choose a keyframe that you'd like to use now it may seem very complicated at first but really when you're just learning how to animate just use the lock rot scale all the time and all this does is it, it any any location changes any rotation changes and any scaling changes you make well will be applied to your animation so just just use that for now it, it'll it'll work for anything you're going to do in the beginning so we're going to at we're at frame 1 we're going to press I to insert a keyframe, and then we're going to insert a lock rot scale keyframe. So I'm going to click that with my left mouse button. So you can see now that white text turned to yellow. That means we have a keyframe here. So now if we scroll up, say, to 240 frames, since Blender runs at 24 frames per second, that'll be a 10 second animation. So I'm at frame 240 now, but it's white, so that means there's no animation data here. I'm going to move it all the way over to the other side. I'm going to scale it up a little bit, so pressing the S key. And I'm just going to rotate it randomly. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You don't have to do the rotation. You don't have to do the scaling. You have to do at least something, though. So at the very least, move it. But I just wanted to show how the rotation and scaling also works. So now that we're on frame 240, this will be a 10-second animation, like I said, at 24 frames per second. And we have our cube in our second position. We're going to insert another keyframe. So I'm going to press I again. And since we did a location change, a rotation change, and a scaling change, this time we need to choose the lock rot scale keyframe. So I'm going to click that to insert that. And you'll see it turned orange again. So now if we scroll through our timeline, you'll see it's animated. You'll see it gets smaller you'll see it rotates and you'll see it's moving 
Now this is the most basic of animation you could make, but it's an animation. Now the frames in between, that's the data that Blender puts in between the two keyframes. So the keyframe we put on frame one, we're telling Blender we're gonna start the cube here at frame 240, sorry, 240. We told Blender that this is what we want our final keyframe to be. We want our cube to be here, rotated like this, scaled like this at frame 240. And then Blender says, okay, we've got these two points. That's great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill in the rest of this for you. Now, you can tell Blender to do it a different way. You'll see it starts off slow and then it gets faster. And then it slows down again. There's there's ways to change that, but we're not going to get into that right now. So if you hit play, you get a preview of your animation. And this is what I recommended, is to always preview your animation in the viewport before you actually go and render it. Especially if you're doing something complicated. Because rendering an animation obviously takes a lot longer than rendering a symbol. A, a single image. An animation is just a collection of rendered images in in uh, grouped one after another to make a movie. So if we hit play, we're gonna preview our animation. So this is exactly what our animation will look like. You can see it went slow, sped up, and now it's slow again, and then it stops. So since our last keyframe was at frame 240, we don't need to go all the way to 250. So let's make the end frame 240. You'll see it's moving down here. So that way Blender is only going to animate from frame 1 to 240. Just for speed of animation, I'm not going to do it in full HD. I'm just going to leave it to stock 50% of uh, full HD. So that works out to uh, whatever. I don't know. There's an add-on that will tell you. I don't really need to do the math right now. But anyways, our animation is now ready for rendering except for the camera. So I'm just going to hit the lamp just so we have some light in our scene and I'm going to turn on the camera again. And you'll see the cube has this little squiggly arrow now. That means that it has an animation. You can see we have this animation here. You don't have to worry about that anymore, but that's just to let you know that this cube is animated. But we're going to grab our camera so that we can actually see our animation. So by pressing the number zero on your numpad, so that's the numbers on the far right hand side of your keyboard, so numpad zero, you get a preview of what your camera will see. And if we scroll through our animation, you'll see that we actually see our entire animation so we don't even need to make any camera changes so we will just forget all that so as long as the as long as you haven't changed anything with the camera and the light it should be fine i'm just gonna move it to somewhere in the middle i'm gonna render a test frame by pressing render just to see what it'll look like so that's fine our animation is gonna look something like that just moving so i'm gonna back out of that by pressing f11 so to set up an animation render, this is how I do it every single time. The first thing, well, let's just make all these small first so that they're not getting in the way. So we've already set up our start frame and our end frame. It's frame 1 to 240 at 24 frames per second. So that'll make for a 10 second animation. Simple math. 240 divided by 24 is 10. So that's 10 seconds. So we, first of all, we need to change it. Sorry, I've never actually done an animation in Blender Render. Uh, if you're using Blender Render, you would go to the Output tab down here, and you would choose MPEG. That's just a standard uh, video format. And then the next one down, you would choose Encoding. And there's presets. I just use the H.264 preset. That's what YouTube uses. That's what um, Netflix uses. It's it's just a good video format. It's smooth. It allows for small file sizes. And it, it works 99.9% .9 of the time for everything you're ever going to do. The rest, you can just leave it. Um, and then in output, we can choose a folder. 
uh, the the stock slash TMP is going to create a folder called slash TMP on your C hard drive. In this case, I'm going to actually just choose it to go to my desktop. So I'm just going to hit, I'm going to select desktop under my system bookmarks here, and I'm going to hit accept. So you'll see now, since I press that little folder button, my output is going to be to the desktop. So now all we have to do is hit the animation button and it's going to render every single frame. Now this is going to take a little while. It's taking approximately one second per frame. So it's going to take about 240 seconds. I'll let it do its thing. So it's about halfway through. It's going, it's going. So we're just about at the last frame, another one to go. There we go, it's finished. So it's frame 240, it's completely done. So now I'm gonna go and find my video file where I saved it, so to my desktop. So if I go to my desktop, here's my video, 001.0240.avi. So if I double click on it, we've got our video, our animation. As simple and as easy as that. Now, if you're using the Cycles render engine, which most, I would assume, 99% of people are nowadays, by choosing Cycles render, it's exactly the same. There's just a few different things. I'm simply going to select my GPU since it's faster, but you might not have that, so it, the, just ignore that. Um, we can leave these settings the same, output is still the same, encoding is still the same, everything's still the same, the only difference is the the location of the arrows of the of the drop down list has changed a little bit. So that's the only the only difference. From here everything is still the same. It still animates exactly the same, and if we just pick say frame 109 and give it a image render so I'm gonna go to the top and hit just image render it's basically exactly the same it just takes slightly longer to render because cycles is a more advanced engine but you'll get basically the exact same output just more realistic but hey stick with blender render if you're just learning it's what blender used for years and years and years cycles is a fairly new addition but that is how you do a basic animation um the other issue that was brought up by her was the inability to work with images so i'm going to delete the cube let's not work with 3 3d images at all now is this factory settings i don't believe so load factory settings no okay that is there we go so i'm going to delete the stock cube by selecting it i'm going to have to reset up screencast keys here So if we select our cube by right clicking on it and deleting it, let's add a plane. We'll go add mesh plane. So let's just work with 2D shapes. I'm just going to scroll in with a scroll wheel here. So the problem she had was she wasn't able to um wasn't able to open a PNG image in Blender. So I'm going to just go to my downloads folder and find a PNG. So we have leaves zero zero whatever. So we have these these leaves here. So um here's one in PNG. So we can make sure that it's a PNG in Windows by seeing right here it's a PNG. If we go to this J JPEG, you can see it's a JPEG image. So that's the first thing to check is to make sure it's a PNG. However, Blender does support a lot of different images. Now maybe the issue you're having is you're trying to just drag and drop it into Blender and that doesn't do anything. However, if you change your view down here, or your window, that, so right now we're in the 3D viewport, change it to the UV slash image editor, and you can open an image from here. So I have default.png, I don't know what that is, I'm a little worried, but I'll open it. 
just a black image okay never mind um you can drag and drop if you have the uv image editor open so we could take leaves.png we could just drag and drop it in there and you can see it's ready to use now if we select this drop down list you can see i have both of these pngs that i've opened available to me so if i was going to go and texture this in the texture panels let's say i made a new texture and i have image or movie selected by default I can choose one of these images to be my texture. Uh, and then if we switch back to our 3D view by clicking this button, I don't believe we will see it because there's no material, but you would be able to texture your image like this. So if we added a material, I haven't used Blender Render in forever. Let's see if I can get this to work. So I'm going to make a new texture and coordinates are going to be generated because we haven't UV unwrapped it. And we're going to open up leaves. There we go. So now our image is projected onto this plane and I'm in rendered mode. However, it should show up in material mode. So to make this show up, all I've done was added a material. So I, all I did was just hit new. So I end up with the material. Then I went into the textures, textures tab and I pressed new. And then I just selected one of the images that I had opened in the UV slash image editor. And again, you can, you can go image and you can open images. You can replace images. You can reload images. You can save images. So this is maybe where you want to do a lot of your imaging stuff opening and what are saving images when you're first learning blender um, and then back in your 3d view you can actually work with them so once we've got it textured once we've got a material then it should show up it's not showing up now it's showing up in render view though so yeah that is basically it if again you're using the cycles render it works very similar, similarly, let's see if I can do it without going into the node editor. We'll add a new texture. We already have the material. And I'm just going to select leaves again. But if we are in cycles render, we would just open up the node editor. We would go to our material. We'd click use nodes. And then we would go add, oh, geez, why am I, texture, sorry, <laughs> image texture. We'd put it somewhere in here. We'd connect the colored dots, so color to color. So it's going to replace the stock white color with whatever color is in the image texture. And we're going to use leaves again. Or again, you could open any image you want. But I'm going to just use leaves since we already opened it, the UV slash image editor. Now if we go back to our 3D view, we see absolutely nothing. That would be because we ha it's not unwrapped. It's not UV unwrapped. And I'm not going to get into that. So to fix that, we would go back to our node editor. We would we would add a input texture coordinates, put it anywhere, and we take generated. So again, color to color, purple to purple. So generated to vector. Now it should show up in our 3D view. There we go. So rendered material. You won't see it in solid, but in, in material or text or I guess only material or rendered in this case, you would see it because it's it's got an alpha mass. But again, that's another advanced topic. So hopefully that solves your problems, Gloria. If not, let me know and we'll continue working on it. I just wanted to uh, throw this up there for you. I thought it'd be no problem at all. I told you it would take 15 minutes. It took me 20. So hopefully that helped you. And I'm going to just leave it off there.